Paris is the city for me. <laughs> oh, uh, bonjour, monsieur Maris. Uh, comment ça va? All that French in one week. Well, you can't say I don't try, Herb. I want the taxpayers of our fair city to get their money's worth. <laughs> but seriously, Herb, you know, besides our own FBI, I have never seen a more efficient police operation than in Nepal. This two weeks briefing should really pay off, and you ought to see the cross-file system. It's amazing. Oh, by the way, where's Trindle? That's what I'd like to know. He checked in yesterday. His baggage and briefcase are in there. Nobody's seen him since. Well, Herb, this is Paris. A night on the town, a few drinks. Maybe he's sleeping it off somewhere, huh? Trindle doesn't drink. Oh. I've never known him to miss an appointment, business or pleasure, especially one like this morning. Oh, what's so important about this morning's? Trindle's here to close a merger deal with a French company. It involves two and a half million dollars. If he doesn't sign the papers by five o'clock this afternoon, his company forfeits $500,000 option money. That's a half a million dollars. Herb, how would you like to meet... When there is so much money involved, one can never tell what even the most honest man might do, huh? Another thing, Inspector. Trindle was in the habit of carrying a great deal of money around with him in his wallet. Oh. It's a habit he had. I've warned him about it. You said, uh, quite a bit. Sometimes as much as $2,000. Ooh, la, la. <laughs> well, Paris is a good city, but like any other large city, we have our bad types. Let us hope he kept the wallet in his pocket, huh? <laughs> I'll start my men working on this at once. And, uh, Lieutenant, it would be my pleasure if you would consider working with me on this case, huh? Inspector, it'll be my pleasure. Good. <laughs> I'll call you the minute I obtain any information. Hmm? Thank you, Inspector. Thanks. Oh, Inspector, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Good. Uh, Bento, Mon... Uh, sure, yeah. Still no news, huh? I've got a bad feeling about this, John. Since when have you come to a conclusion based on a feeling? Take it easy, Herb. I'm sure Trindle will show up. I wish there was something I could do. This sitting around. We only knew who his friends were. Who he called. Trindle's briefcase? Yeah. Nothing so far, huh? Just business papers. Names and addresses. Carbon copy. It's all business. Principals involved in the transaction. I've already called all of them. Guess we're out of luck. Maybe not. I almost missed this. Copy of his schedule. Jurado, 9 a.m. That's where we were supposed to be this morning. It's the same schedule I've got. I thought you already contacted those people. Yeah, but here's something down at the bottom. Carver. Re... For let. No number, no time. Is he involved in the business? No, I've never heard Trendle mention you very much. Well, uh, was it worth anything? I don't know. It's a cafe. I'm going over. You coming? No, wait a minute, Herb. Let's not just run off. I'll call the inspector. Let his men take care of this if it's worth anything. They'll find out quickly enough. And if it isn't, we've wasted his time. It won't hurt to check it out first. But Herb! This isn't the States, you know. There's a little thing called uh, language difference. Well, this is your chance to see how outrageous my French is. Oh. Hello, mon ami. Oh. God is cafe. It doesn't sound very French to me. Huh? Uh, Polybou's Anglais. Oh, uh, American. Yeah, how do you know that? Yes, uh... I speak English. A, a little. Do you like a table? No, no. We'd like to speak to the owner of the cafe. Oh, Eddie, uh, oui. Suivez-moi. Eddie, some American gentleman to see you. American? Well, I'm Eddie Carver. Mr. Carver? Always glad to see folks from back home. How do you do? Incidentally, we have the best food in town, and not at tourist prices. Well, that's good to know, but we're not interested in food right now, Mr. Carver. We're looking for an American friend of ours, Mr. Trindle. Ralph Trindle? That's right. Well, he's a buddy of mine. He was here last night. What's the matter? Anything wrong? Who are you? 
This is Lieutenant Weston. He's with the police back in the States. I'm Herbert Maris, attorney for Ralph Trindle. Simple fact of the matter is, you're the one person we know who's seen Trindle since he left his hotel yesterday morning. You say you can't find him. That's right. Paul. I am not subsidizing your art career. Now get on with your work. <laughs> He's a young artist. Unless you keep an eye on them, they'll drink you dry and sit around and sketch all day long. Eddie. Eddie, your lunch is ready. Darling, this is Mr. Maris and Lieutenant Weston. They're friends of Ralph's. How uh, are you? I'm sure. There seems to be something wrong. They can't find Ralph. What is it, Mrs. Carver? Tu feras mieux de leur dire. There may be nothing to it. Maybe my wife is right. See, Ralph got into trouble here last night. What kind of trouble? He met someone on a private business matter last night. They got into a bad argument, and this guy kind of threatened Ralph. Who was he? Well, I don't want to cause anybody any trouble. Besides, this is kind of a personal matter with Ralph. Mr. Carver, Ralph is missing. His name is Armand Grenier. You see, after the war, we were stationed here in France. Ralph, well, he... Married Granray's sister, Annette. Married? Oh, that isn't all. About ten months later, he was transferred back to the United States, and about two months after that, she had his child, a little girl. Annette died in childbirth, and Granier brought the child up. Do you know why Granier threatened him last night? Well, you see, Ralph had never seen his daughter, and, well, he's wealthy now, and getting older, and a lonesome man. And he wanted to take Christine back to the States with him. Mr. Carver, what happened after the argument? Well, Grenier left, and Ralph stayed around till closing time. Then he took off. I offered to call him a cab, but he said he'd rather walk. Do you happen to know where Grenier lives? Yeah, a little farm outside of Paris. A village called uh, saint Marie. I see. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. John? Yeah? Aren't you ready yet? Listen, you certainly wouldn't need help. I don't know why it is. I have to do all the thinking around here. San Marie is 10 kilometers from here. Yeah, that ought to be it up ahead. I thought we overshot it when we got off the main road back there. I hope we don't have as much trouble finding Grenier's place. Whenever you're ready. How do you start this thing? Turn the key. Oh. Hello. Is Mr. Granier here? Uh, Monsieur Granier Easy. <clears throat> oh, it's Papa Don Gouache. Come on, Monsieur. You see, uh, that's all it takes, a little intelligence and French. Papa, Papa. Just here, mon chéri. Yes. Oui, monsieur. Monsieur Granier, parlez-vous anglais? Yes, I worked with the British during the last war. What is it you want? I understand you had an appointment with a friend of mine in Paris yesterday. Ralph Trendle, the father. Uh, Christine, va donc finir ce que tu faisais tout à l'heure. Va, ma petite fille, va. Oui, papa. Now, what do you wish? Uh, we suspect something's happened to Mr. Trendle, and well, we thought you might know about it. I know nothing. Monsieur, we know that Trendle wanted to take his daughter from you. She's not his daughter, she's mine. I brought her up. I understand. I also understand that you had good reason to harm Mr. Trendle. Trendle! Trendle! That's all I hear. I hate that name. Pooh! That's what I think of him. You know what he did? He killed my sister. He la tué ma petite soeur. Une petite soeur que j'adorais, monsieur. He killed her. Now, you two get out of here. The two of you. Mind your business. You're two strangers in a foreign country. Get out! Leave me alone. Get out! I mean, get out! 
Grani, no come I have no jurisdiction here. Let's get back to Paris. Let the inspector handle this. Uh, did you understand all that he said? I think he made himself very clear. Forgive me for keeping you waiting. That's all right, Inspector, but we've come up with something we thought you'd better look into immediately. Uh, one moment, Lieutenant. Please sit down. Huh? Inspector, we've learned something very important. I'll hear you in a moment, but uh, I've just received some news, bad news. We've found Trindale. I'm sorry, Monsieur. He is dead. <laughs> Side street alley. When the police picked him up, he denied killing Trindell, claiming he found the body in his truck when he went out on a delivery late that morning. Well, he says he has a good job, a family, he does not need to kill Ora. Then why didn't he go to the police? Oh, he was frightened about his job. He would lose it if his boss found out that he used the truck last night. He went out to see some friends and uh, he has no car of his own. Huh? Inspector, where did he visit? Henri Montpellier, New York Follette, two streets from the cafe. Well, Trindle didn't take a cab. He was well dressed. He could have seen him walking. What about Trindle's wallet? The money in it? Well, he could have hidden that easily enough, huh? What about the people he visited? Oh, we'll check with them, but it will not help to establish an alibi. He already admits that he went out to his car a few times for some more wine, he says. Huh? Well, Inspector. Grania could have been waiting outside for Trindle and jumped him when he came out. He hated Trindle? Blames his sister's death on him. Besides, he was afraid Trindle was going to take the little girl away. That is possible, but he would have to carry the body to the truck, lift it to put it in, and you say he's an old man, huh? He's a farmer. He's strong. Well, it won't hurt to have Grania brought to headquarters, but I'm not so sure about this one. Allez, allez, filet, huh? Monsieur Maurice, I'm sorry for this tragedy. But I assure you we'll find the murderer, whoever it is. Well, I'd, I'd better contact the principals involved in the murder and see if I can tie up the rest of Trindle's affairs. I'll be back at the hotel, John. Thank you, uh, Inspector. Thank oh, you uh, well, Herb, I'll be over in about an hour. Oh, Herb, I was just about to come over, but something came up. Grenier and the girl are gone. They probably took off right after we left. Well, that's nice, John. I'm glad to hear it. Wait a minute, Herb. Don't you realize what this means? Grenier is running away. He's showing his hand. He's a killer. Your French is really outrageous, John. I, I suggest you stick to English. Herb, uh, are you in some kind of trouble? You're so right. Now, that's what I call English. I'll tell the inspector we'll get over there right away. Oh, no, I, I'm sorry. I won't be in. But I hope we all get together soon. Goodbye. Where do we go to meet? It's all right, miss. You okay, Herb? We got him! I'm Mr. Combla, huh? Oh! Carla. I thought you and Trindle were buddies. I don't get it. Buddies? I should have killed him a long time ago. All I asked him for was a small loan. I was about to lose my cafe. He said it was money down the drain. Oh, he ridiculed me. Everything came easy to Trendle. Money, success. He wouldn't loan me a measly $3,000. Well, if it's any consolation, where you're going, you won't need it. I don't know. Herb, uh, I, I think you're going to need this. Where's the message I wrote on? Oh, you mean that promissory note you gave the cab driver promising him a thousand dollar tip if he brought the police? A thousand? I only offered him a hundred. Mm, do you have a carbon copy? Herb, I think you're about to indulge in a very popular continental sport. They call it bargaining. Yeah, I've just been exposed to it. It cost me five hundred. I hate to think what I'm going to get for a thousand. Monsieur Maurice, um, 
Shall we say, what do they call it in France? Uh, an evening on the town. Oui? Oui. <laughs> I only wish I had something to celebrate. But, monsieur, you have. <laughs> 